reduce ah, hi welcome back pala from the break sorry i just start to jump in there no actually alam nyo pag sinabi ko let's take a break mga isang dalawang minuto lang yun <laughs> i i just sorry i just really say let's take a break you know why para makahinga kayo okay para mapilitan para ma-signal sa inyo na it's okay you can turn your attention away and just digest what i'm saying okay i don't want to force this whole talk on you in know, one big go okay So yes, please take it in a bit at a time, de ba? This is not a love Diaz movie. Ha? I love love Diaz. Anyway, back to the point. Um, so gestel and consumption. Yung ano yung gestel? Yun yung kay Heidegger this concept which she came up with, which is end framing, which basically means when you engage being, you don't really allow them to present as what they present. Yung pinag-usapan natin sa earlier lecture. Uh, earlier lecture, kanina lang yun sa akin. Eh. Anyway, yung, it's basically when you allow being to presence according to how you frame it. Ano ba yung pag-uunawa mo? Ano ba yung gusto mong pag-uunawa? Ano ba yung determination mo based on your way of understanding reality? So that's what gestel means. Okay? Um, and framing. So when we reduce things to consumer goods, to products, to consumables, we really transform beings into basic needs and entertainments or diversions that require a lot of energy to make. Okay. But first of all, one thing about anthropocentrism, really, in of this era, of this period of ours, is that we really are reductive people. When we see things, we're always reducing things to, okay, well, okay, okay. In fairness, ugali talaga ng tao yun. I say we need it eh, in order to navigate the world. We have to kind of reduce it into terms we can understand and manipulate and and um you know and, and manipulate and do things with kanyan. Pero in this age of ours, parang na heightened sobra yun. Kasi now we reduce we can see things as part of a great machinery that feeds and cons- and that feeds me and produces things for me and which I consume. So everything na lang For me, I frame as something consumable, as some product or some resource. It's either a resource that is put into a product that I consume or it's either something I can use for my livelihood or it's something I can manipulate for my well-being. Okay? So basically, everything we see, we transform them to basic needs and entertainments or diversions that require, that that really are for us, that they, 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 they entertain us, they feed us, they... But other things we consume. The thing is about our age is that when we do transform things from resources into consumables, it requires a lot of energy to make. Okay? Kasi dati naman, ganun rin naman. We engage the world in a sense and then we reduce it to something we can consume, right? But it didn't require so much energy to make it. Like think about coffee na lang. ba? Diba? Pucha yung kape, yung mga kape yun. Unang-una, para maging social yung kape mo, kailangan nilipad pa siya mula kung saan mang exotic na lugar na yun. That's the first thing. Right? You get it from somewhere so far away. And then, and then it comes to you and then you go through certain processes to make it something you can use. So you get the beans and then and you roast it, and then, I don't know, you roast it in a special way, and then you have to grind it in a special way, and then you're going to go through a machine that consumes so much electricity just to make this much freaking coffee. Nakakatuwa ba yun? Yes. Okay, hindi ko, hindi ko alam. Hindi ko talaga nagigets yung espresso. Pero ba? Diba, tap o kaya yung mga gourmet meal, come on, para kainin yung gantong kalaking karne, kumatay ka ng buong baka. Okay. Joke lang yun. Siyempre, yung mga ibang bahagi ginamit. Pero ang wasteful kaya ng gourmet meal, especially slow cooking. Okay, guys, there's something to be said about slow cooking. But really, how much carbon is that? Right? How much forest do you destroy just to get the wood for it? ba? Diba? So, sometimes, the things we do are so energy and resource hungry just to produce something that's really for us whoa this is such a great thing to consume diba? but really it doesn't really enrich the body or the self diba? think of Louis Vuitton okay don't think of Louis Vuitton but really Louis Vuitton really it looks like crap people 
but it's so expensive. Why do we buy it? Because it makes us feel like our lives are meaningful if we can afford that. Shish. Okay. Anyway, um, but what's the value of it? Okay. But I have a better example. Think about making art. Nax. Because, di ba, art's supposed to really realize your soul, yourself, the realization of things, di ba? But, you know, millions are spent to get things just right. Just get things exactly right. For instance, Broadway musicals, good mother of God, how much do they spend to get those things going? Okay? And it might be good art. Some of them are rarely, but some of them are. And these works do enrich the human spirit. But does it really have to cost so much? Because we have come to a point where simple and perhaps more profound art creation doesn't do it for us anymore. For us, it's like, ah, kung hindi mabongga yan, ah, bakit ang simple-simple? San yung revolving stage? San yung helicopter? San yung lumilipad na mga tao? Diba? There has to be so much spectacle involved in producing art. Diba? And some of it doesn't even enrich us. Okay? But in another time, this would not be a problem, but today art creation is tied to environmental destruction and exploitation, and so it is a problem. Right? We have to think about that. Why can't we just produce beauty without it costing so much on the human soul and the environment, without it having to be exploitative? Why not? I'm okay, guys, I love Beethoven. <clears throat> I love Beethoven. I really love Beethoven. Okay, especially his quartet, right? And people are like, yeah, look at Western civilization, European civilization, so great, produce Beethoven. Truly, truly, okay? But in order to produce Beethoven, do you know how many nations and people suffered to sustain the kind of lifestyle that sustained a Beethoven and an orchestra that could play the Ninth Symphony? A lot. Africa, the whole of Africa, China, Japan, all of those nations suffered, their people suffered just for the West to gain enough resources to accumulate enough wealth to be able to sustain things like philharmonic orchestras and the composers that compose for these philharmonic orchestras. Hollywood, okay, Hollywood doesn't produce art, but None. Okay, never mind. Wag na lang Hollywood. But I get the point. Okay, okay, na yun. Okay. But what is high end consumption about anyway? Because di ba we like it? Because eh? it's high end consumption. Parang like wow. Because you, you know, mga pretentious people that are so like into like oh look at Europe. Look, it's produced such great art. Ganyan, di ba? And look at the great artists in Europe that produce all these things, especially orchestral music and ballet. Um, but you know. Orchestral music and ballet are really supported by exploitative systems. Eh? But it was so important because it showed us talaga what we could do eh, with so much wealth and what wealth could produce and what wealth could entertain us with and make our lives meaningful. Okay. So, hand consumption is mainly about the conquest of the earth and nature and it shows us what we can produce and how we can transform nature and then prove to ourselves how great we are and how high we are and how creative we are. So not just by consuming, but by consuming in ways that show that the human person's power to transform the raw and natural product into a human product that's so freaking entertaining and beautiful and, and proves my power and, and proves how high above nature we are. It makes us feel that we're less vulnerable to death, to disease, to nature, and which makes us look like the kind of beings capable of transcending frailty and absurdity. That's what high-end consumption is about. Kaya kung nakakabili ka ng Louis Vuitton, ang pangit naman talaga, seriously, ang pangit talaga. Ay, sorry, ang ganda ng bag mo, mahal-mahal niya. Pero ang pangit naman talaga. I mean, fine, it, I'm just saying, it doesn't look like it's really worth 250000 for a friggin' bag, right? But, I think people like to own things like Louis Vuitton bags, even if it's useless, or BMWs, even if it's in the end, you can drive a Kia and still be happy. Because to show that you can afford those things shows what kind of beings we are. And it's the kind of beings that transcend no normal human existence.
existence and transcends frailty and an absurdity. Gets nyo ba yung connection? Kasi, mas mayaman ako, mas nakakabili ako na mas komplikado mga bagay, mas pinapakita na mas may kakayahan ako higit sa ibang tao. At kung na yung nabibili ko, sobrang komplikado at hirap gawin tulad ng kape na ang daming pinoprosesong dinadaan ang pinapakita na mas higit ako sa kalikasan at may kapangirian ako sa kalikasan. Tignan mo, sobrang kapangirian ko sa kalikasan na kaya kong kunin yung tae ng civet musang gagawin ko tong kape masarap. Ganun ako maka- makapangirian. Gets nyo. Pero in so many ways, we try to do that. So in the end, it's about death. The more we have, the more we are. Parang mas makapal yung being natin, mas matatag. And the, for, the further we are from nothingness. And the, for, the further we are from oblivion, obliteration, and nothingness. Parang mas meron ka, mas meron ka. Parang, parang being, parang the more you have in having, the more you are in being. Okay? So the more complex our having is, and our consumption is, and our producing is, the more we put put off the idea that human beings are powerless before death. That is our cry before the darkness of death, saying, "Hindi ako, hindi mo ako kaya iwaksi, kasi makapangyarihan ako. Tignan mo ang ginawa ko sa kape. Tignan mo ang ginawa ko sayaw, ganon." na kailangan ng may cranes at merong ganong effect na may hologram na ganyan. Because we can make such things, because we can transform the world, because we can turn a swamp into a subdivision, we can make things become meaningful. And because we can make things become meaningful, we really have power over death and nature and suffering. So, that is the rationality of consumption. In order to maintain the consumer system, we need a certain relationship to that which presences. Okay? So, in order to maintain this system of consumption, we need to have a certain relationship with being. So, yung relationship na yun, yung tinatawag ni Heidegger na Gestell, where we see the world and experience it as yung tinatawag yung standing reserve, yung magagamit, hinihintay lang na gamitin mo. Standing reserve. Nagihintay lang siya para gamitin mo. Parang, para siyang alipin na nagihintay lang para mapansin mo tapos gamitin mo. Okay? That's the basic relationship. We don't experience reality as presencing and presencing in a way that that allows us to see it and to engage it creatively and meaningfully. We do not feel the need to release it into its mystery. We don't need to, to we don't feel the need to engage beings in their mystery, in the truth, and, and, and the greatness of their mystery. All things are just consumables that need to be transformed into human products that we can consume. Okay, So this attitude defines our capacity to open to the presencing of beings to us. So that's what's happening. Um, we can open to presencing as bearers of value. We cannot open to their presencing as bearers of of their own meaning. Our system of values is always ego-based, it's very reductive. We always ask, how, what does this mean for me? What, how does this serve me? How will it make me happy? Kahit nga pag-ibig, ganun na yun, ba? How will it make me happy? Why are you with me? How will, how will you serve me and make me feel secure and happy? Diba? We always ask, how do I reduce the other to the same? Never what presences and how is it presencing to me and how do I let it come to me as its own mystery and its own wealth of being. How do I how do I maganda, you see Heidegger term yan, how do I release it into its play it into the play of its mystery. Okay. I think that's Derrida and Heidegger together there. But diba, in the end you want to open to the Parang it's more creative and fulfilling open to the world when you allow things to presence according to their mystery. Eh? Diba? Um, like for instance, uh, just to show you lang, corny examples, okay? Pero yung mga halimbawa na, kunyari naglalakad ka pa uwi, tapos nandun sa kasakali na walang, na may mga puno lang, tapos walang building, tapos nakita yung langit. Di ba yung mga panahon na namangha ka sa langit, tapos napatingin ka at hindi mo inisip, ano ba yung halagat sa langit sa akin? Paano ba ako tinutugunan ng langit? Paano ako ba magagamit yung langit? Hindi, nandun lang yung ga- langit. Nagpatalab ka lang. Because it's so vast, because it's so immense, because it's so beautiful, namangha ka lang. Yun yung release 
making things presence as they are presencing. O kahit mamangha ka sa puno dahil ang ganda niya, dahil ang laki niya, dahil ang tanda niya, o mamangha ka sa isang batang naglalaro lang kasi punong-puno siya ng buhay at punong-puno siya ng, ng, ng kayamanan, ng, 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 ng kaligayahan na no? nakikitag siya sa buhay. Yan, nagpapatalab ka dun sa presence and then you're not asking, how's this kid gonna be useful for me? How can I use this kid? What will this kid do when he grows up? Mga ganyan, di ba? Yun. Wala na tayo dun eh. Lahat na lang na nakakatagpo natin, how is this useful to me? Paano ko ito kakainin? Paano ko ito makakonsume? Paano ko ito magagamit? It's just a source, a standing reserve. Okay. So we have concretized ourselves. So yun, parang kinulong na natin ang ating sarili sa mga sistema, concretize ourselves into systems which are particularly destructive. First, it, it prevents us from being creative and respectful because Everything we see is just a standing reserve. It's never a thing that presences. So we sort of trapped ourselves, concretize. Yung parang nalagay na tayo sa isang sistema na matigas na naging mapangwasak sa mundo at naging mapangwasak tayo sa atin sa sarili at naging mapangwasak tayo sa ating kapwa. And we do not get out of it. We become destructive to the earth. We destroy ourselves. We destroy our fellow human beings because we're caught in this system of consumption and destruction and reduction and, and how do we get out of it covid kind of said oh take it take a break take a break muna tayo let's rationalize the way we look at reality baka you can look at things that really mean something but look at that the whole system collapsed and we're so freaking afraid and we can't wait to get back on the system again diba so we have concretized ourselves in a way that violates the presencing of beings at what comes to presence in the presencing of what presence says, hindi na natin hinahayaan yung mga nagmemeron o yung mga umiirat na makitagpo sa atin ayon sa kanilang tulay na nagpagpepresensya, lagi na lang tayo makikitagpo sa kanila o hinahayaan natin na makitagpo sila sa atin sa isang paraan na lagi na uuwi sa ating pag-uunawa sa kanilang pagpepresensya. At tayo yung nagtatakta ng kanilang pagpepresensya. We determine how the exist, we determine the meaning of their existence, and we determine how they should be in the world. And that's why we're trapped. We're trapped in our own self-destruction. Kasi, that's why we can't imagine a way out of the destructive way we realize ourselves in, in the world. Kasi, yun na nga, eh, na, nakulong na tayo sa ganong klaseng mentalidad. Eh. It's not just like we have systems, but their systems reflect our very way of seeing and being. And because it's destructive, our systems are destructive, it's physically destroying our world, it's, it's, it's destroying ourselves on a, met, on a metaphysical or, a philosoph or on, a, yeah, on an existential level, it's destroying our very selves and our fellow human beings and the, the environment. But what can we do? We're trapped. We're trapped. Bakit? Nanigas na tayo eh. Nanigas na tayo sa isang particular na paraan. Right? So I said COVID gave us a chance but now we can't wait to just jump back in the old ways. So this way of concretization has hardened into our system of valuation and of our cultures and our ways of being the world in the world are coded into our cultures and our civilizations and our rationalities. Rationality means the way you understand reality eh. Hindi yung rational part. Just the way you understand and value reality, such that we can't imagine any other way of being in the world. And while we're trapped here, we can never be whole. And we are dragging the world along in our self-destruction. And this is because we can get trapped in destructive systems of self-concretization. And now we're wondering, well, how can we get past it? How can we get past this system? So there, we'll end there. I'm giving you a preview of the next topic. Um, it's repentance and rebirth, okay? So we'll take a break now. And then we'll get back to repentance and rebirth. To give us naman hope para hindi naman masyadong malungkot na COVID na nga tayo, nakakulong sa bahay, panay self-destruction pa. Really? Okay. Anyway, taking a break. Bye, guys.